This is Chapter 8, Lesson 3, Functions and Equations. In this lesson, you will learn how to write an equation to represent a function, and you will also learn how to graph linear functions. You can write, you can use an equation to represent a function. The input, or independent variable, represents the x value, and the output, or dependent variable, represents the y value. An equation expresses the dependent variable in terms of the independent variable. Write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. When we are doing this, we are first trying to find the function rule. In the first step in trying to find the function rule, we have to look at our input and output. How did I get from the input to the output? Well, how do you get from 1 to 9, from 2 to 18? 3 to 27, 4 to 36, and 5 to 45. We multiply by 9. And we write that as 9x. So the function rule is 9x. To make it an equation, we're simply going to put y equals in front of it. Because remember, equations have equal signs. And we're dealing with the input, which is x, and the output, which is y. Letter B, write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. Again, we are going to first try and find the function rule. We need to compare the input and the output. How do I get from 1 to 16, 2 to 32, 3 to 48, 4 to 64, and 5 to 80? We take the x value and we multiply it by 16. And we write that function rule as 16x. To make it an equation, we put y equals in front of it. So y equals 16x is the equation. Letter C. Write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. Again, compare your x and y, or input and output. How do you get from 0 to 0, 1 to 4, 2 to 8, 3 to 12, and 4 to 16? You take your input and you multiply it by 4. In other words, 4x is the function rule. To make it an equation, put y equals in front of it. Letter D, write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. How do you get from 1 to 6, 2 to 12, 3 to 18, 4 to 24, and 5 to 30? You take your x value and you multiply it by 6. We would write the function rule as 6x. To make it an equation, we put y equals in front of it. Letter E, write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. Again, how do I get from 0 to 2, 1 to 14, 2 to 26, 3 to 38, and 4 to 50? Well, you can't do it by one step, which means it's a two-step function. So here, then, we have to go through our steps to find the two-step function rule. We have to look at our outputs. Find the pattern in the outputs. What are you adding? To get from 2 to 14, 14 to 26, 26 to 38, and 38 to 50. You're adding 12. Therefore, 12x is our magic number. That's also the start of our rule. So now take 12 and multiply it by each of your inputs. 12 times 0 is 0. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 3 is 36. And 12 times 4 is 48. Now compare those numbers with your output. How do you get from 0 to 2? Good, you add 2. That is the rest of the function rule. 
The function rule is 12x plus 2. To make it an equation, we still just put y equals in front of it. Take a look at letter f. Write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. How do you get from 0 to 1, 1 to 6, 2 to 11, 3 to 16, and 4 to 21? Again, there is nothing, no simple one-step function rule that will get us there, so we need to figure out the two-step rule. Take a look at your outputs. How do you get from 1 to 6, 6 to 11, 11 to 16, and 16 to 21? Good, you add 5. So my magic number is 5x. Now we're going to take our inputs and plug them in to 5x. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. And 5 times 4 is 20. So we have the first part of our rule. It's 5x. To find the second part, we compare our numbers that we just wrote to our output. How do you get from 0 to 1, or 5 to 6, 10 to 11, etc.? You add 1. The function rule is 5x plus 1. To make it an equation, you put y equals in front of it. Part 2, graph linear functions. You can also graph a function. If the graph is a line, the function is then called a linear equation. If you look at the word linear, you'll see the word line in it. When graphing a function, the input is the x-coordinate and the output is the y-coordinate. So here we have the equation y equals 2x. And below it is going to serve as our function table. In this blank box right here, you're going to write the rule, the equation. y equals 2x. And then you're going to pick three x values. I like to start with 0, 1, and 2. Well, this is your input, and our rule or equation is y equals 2x. So you're going to take 2 times 0, 2 times 1, 2, oops, lost my marker there. 2 times 2, and your y is the output. What is 2 times 0? 0. zero. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And in this last column, we're just writing them as coordinates. Take your input of 0, your output of 0, and write them as a, an ordered pair. The next one would be 1, 2. And the last one would be 2, comma, 4. Now that you have coordinates, it's real easy to graph them. The point 0, 0 is right there. So draw a point. 1, 2. We draw a point. And 2, 4. We're drawing a point. When you have your points, you're going to draw a line with arrows on both sides, connecting them. I have to adjust mine a little. And there you have y equals 2x graph. Let's take a look at letter B. This time, your equation is y equals 3x plus 2. So in this box, and I'm just going to write it a little bit bigger here, y equals 3x plus 2. Again, just stick with 0, 1, 2 for your x values and plug them into your rule. 3 times 0 plus 2 
Well, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. 3 times 1 plus 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. 3 times 2 plus 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And then write them as ordered pairs. 0, 2, 1, 5, and 2, 8. Now that we have our ordered pairs, we can go ahead and graph them. 0, 2, out there. My pen doesn't line up exactly. 1, 5 is there. And if you notice this one, this point, we can't actually graph, but that's okay. From here, you're going to draw a line connecting the points with arrows on either side. And I'm just going to adjust mine a little bit. And that is the graph of y equals 3x plus 2. Letter C. The graph shows the total amount y that you spend if you buy one book in x magazines. Make a function table for the input-output values. Write an equation from the graph that could be used to find the total amount y if you buy one book in x magazines. So we're just going to look at these points on the graph and plug them into our table. Your number of magazines is on the bottom, that's your x, and the total amount is on the side, which is your y value. So if you take a look at this first point, there's one magazine that costs $20. Look at the next point, two magazines, $25. Three magazines, $30. And four magazines, $35. Just extend my table here. That's the first part. The next step says to write an equation from the graph that could be used to find the total amount y if you buy one book in X magazines. So all we're doing from here is finding the equation. So we need to find a pattern. Do you see a pattern between the input and the output? There's definitely not a one-step pattern, which means it's two-step. So we need to focus on the output or the y values. What's the pattern in the y values? Good, plus 5. So my magic number is 5x. We then take our input and multiply it by 5. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times 4 is 20. And we're going to compare these numbers with our output. How do you get from 5 to 20? Good, you add 15. So the function rule is 5x plus 15, which means the equation is y equals 5x plus 15.